Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. So in this video I just want to do something slightly different, not talking about a physical media release, but instead I just want to uh, talk about a movie for a moment for a number of different reasons actually. Um, but the movie is one that's just currently available on streaming only, uh, Amazon, iTunes to rent or buy. Um, I watched it as well on Tubi. Um, and the film is called Rosebud Lane. Um, this is a very small movie, independent movie, um, but there's a few reasons why I just want to talk about it. So firstly, just to briefly summarise the story itself, there's two main aspects to this. Uh, basically, this is a, a father who wants to reunite with the son that he's never known. Um, and the father is a filmmaker and the son has an interest in movies. And so uh, throughout the movie, the father and son are able to connect via their love of movies. But this is also a movie which is about single mums. It's a tribute to a single mum uh, who has managed to raise her child um, by herself. Um, but she then encounters some difficulties as well. So, yeah, this is a, a, an interesting drama that's been put together by an actor and a director called John Lacey. Now, John Lacey has been in the film industry for many years. Um, he was born in 1965 and he started acting in 1989. Uh, interestingly, he one of his very first roles was in this film, Dogfight, um, which stars River Phoenix and Lily Taylor. Now, I've talked about this movie before, uh, and in fact, I included it in my um, top 25 movies of the 90s. Uh, this film isn't available on Blu-ray at the moment, but I'm pretty sure that sooner or later, this is a film that may get picked up, say, by Criterion. I think it's that kind of movie that would do well to be released by Criterion. It's a really beautiful uh, movie set during... Uh, the oncoming of the Vietnam War and a really touching drama here between uh, River Phoenix and Lily Taylor. Uh, anyway, so John Lacey had a starring or a co-starring role in this film, Dogfight. Um, he's also acted in films such as uh, Dragon, The Bruce Lee Story, and Zodiac from David Fincher. And he's been in a huge amount of TV series that include House and Criminal Minds and 24, um, a whole range of uh, things there. So he's had a really steady career, acting career, um, since the 90s. Um, and he also uh, does training to actors and uh, he does his own writing as well. Um, so he's kept really busy uh, throughout all these years. But yeah, perhaps he's not a household name because he's always just in these sort of co-starring roles. Um, but yeah, round about the time of the pandemic he wanted to make this movie and kind of as a tribute to his own mum as well um so yeah he wrote and directed this movie rosebud lane and it's really interesting he managed to put together a budget of about a hundred thousand to make it uh, because of his uh time and experience in the film industry he was able to get together a crew of people and he's made this movie and managed to get it uh, released so yeah like i say this is a really low budget movie um but it's just interesting how he's put it together so in terms of his cast, uh, he's used people as well, which are not necessarily big names. I mean, and, and people that have been, uh, again, in the film industry for quite some time, but perhaps just sort of lower down the cast list. So his main actress in this is a lady called Tyne Steckline. Um, and she actually started her career um, as a dancer. And she's been in the high school musical movies. Um, she's been in a sort of Dancing with the Stars on TV. Um, um, a lot of dancing roles in films such as Burlesque and Fame. Um, but yeah, never really a dramatic acting role. So this is a big first for her to be uh, the main uh, lead in this film. And she does a really good job here. Um, and then the main actor in this role is an actor called Brad Abril. Um, and again, Brad has been in the film industry for a long time, but mostly uh, his involvement in movies has been uh, as a voice actor. So he was the worm guy in the Men in Black movies. Um, he's been Frankenstein in Fr uh, Hotel Transylvania Transformania. I think it's called that. Um, he's been a news announcer, news reporter in loads of movies. Um, so again, not a big name perhaps, but he's got the time and experience in the industry. So 
I just think it's quite fascinating that uh, John Lacey was able to just put this film together. He made it in just two weeks uh, and shot it in Hendersonville and Brevard, uh, which is just outside uh, Hendersonville, uh, North Carolina. Um, so this, this is a area that's uh, a few hundred miles away from Tennessee. Um, I think Taylor Swift, I think, uh, lived in Hendersonville as well for quite some time. Um, but yeah, that's one thing I really like about the film is that you really get this sense of this small town feel in Hendersonville so uh, John Lacey uses really good locations he uses actual locations there is a, a diner there that uh, he uses and uh, a motel um, and also uh, the Looking Glass Falls as well so we get some really good locations and a really good sense of him knowing that area uh, because it is indeed where his mum lives um, so I like that about the film um, the story itself, for sure, cinephiles or movie lovers should get a kick out of uh, some of this because, like I say, the filmmaker uh, father in this and the son connect via movies. And so, um, you know, the little uh, boy in this, he, he knows about movies. His bedroom is adorned with loads of pictures of movie stars from the 50s. You know, Gregory Peck, Richard Burton, Peter O'Toole, James Dean, Audrey Hepburn, um, loads of people there. Um, and they just like to talk to each other about movies. And that's how they form their bond um, by talking about movies and playing games such as, you know, name a film and then you guess the director. Um, so, yeah, in that kind Kind of uh, aspect of the movie then I'm sure a lot of movie fans are going to get a bit of a kick out of uh, trying to spot all the various movie references that there are in this film um, and also when it comes to the cast there is a, a bigger name in the cast as well and that is Tess Harper um, and Tess Harper plays a, a nice little supporting role as um, the um, manager of a diner um, and uh, really sort of you know not, has a nice manner with everybody now Tess Harper um, was Oscar nominated for her role in Crimes of the Heart um, but I think the main reason that she's in this film is probably as a nod to the 1983 movie Tender Mercies uh, and in that film um, as you may recall um, that's about an alcoholic uh, country and western singer who then actually tries to re-establish a connection with his long lost daughter so there's some sort of similarities uh, there I guess with Tender Mercies and that probably explains um, Tess Harper's supporting role but yeah nice nice little supporting role uh, from her um, so overall, yeah, I just think this film is quite impressive in terms of how John Lacey was able to just put this all together in two weeks. Um, it is a professionally made movie. Um, I do think that perhaps uh, there are some uh, shortcomings in the script and there was uh, some aspects of how the film ended um, that I wasn't so keen on. Um, but uh, again, just have to bear in mind how... Um, limited the budget was on this and uh, and the constraints in putting together a film such as this so uh, in terms of what has been achieved here I think it's a, a great thing um, but films like this yeah how do you get to know about them unless you talk about them so yeah um, all I can do is just mention this film Rosebud Lane see if that sparks your interest maybe you'll go and seek it out um, I will put a link below as well to a nice interview that I found with John Lacey uh, by um, the Diary of an Actress uh, YouTube channel um, so yeah interesting little interview this and it really just gives you a bit more background about uh, John Lacey and his motivation for making this movie um, so yeah um now i should explain the reason why i'm particularly talking about this is that again it's ironic really we're talking about a character here who has a love and connection of movies with his son well i had a brief connection with john lacey uh, on my instagram page about uh, a, a video that i'd actually put up um, a short while ago to do with three characters three movies um so yeah he kindly made a comment on that and we just had a brief interaction on that so 
again it's like i've said before um comments do mean a lot to me and uh yeah i was really pleased to have that comment from john uh it's quite funny really we've been following each other from uh, on instagram for quite some time but i hadn't really fully appreciated uh, who he was i don't really use instagram um too closely i suppose but uh, uh nonetheless yeah it was really interesting for me to sort of make that uh connection and then just get to learn a little bit more about him so there we go. Uh, some brief comments there on Rosebud Lane. Um, so like I say, the strengths of the film are that you have a father son talking about movies. So there's a lot of movie references there. Um, the way that it has been filmed in Hendersonville. I really like that intimate uh, atmosphere there of getting that sense of a small town life um, and the strong performance from uh, Tyne Steckline uh, playing a single mum here uh, and really a role for her that uh, she hasn't been able to sort of um, show that kind of acting range before because most of her acting performances before have been in sort of dance roles um, so yeah and again for Brad Abril as well again he's mostly in doing voice work so the, the opportunity for him to be in front of the camera and doing a lead role like this I think it's a good thing you know all these people they've been working in the film industry for a long time um, and yeah they're wanting to just uh, you know get their uh, work out there and get uh, better recognized so yeah if we as movie fans can support that in any way we can then that's a good thing um so yeah hopefully this film may be of interest to you if it is you know please do go and seek it out um that's it for me now probably waffled on too much but yeah all the best to you please do join me again for some more videos i'll see you again bye bye